Can Mary Make a Porno is the latest wacky, raunchy, off-color comedy with the heart of gold by writer-director Kevin Smith. If you haven't seen the trailer, or if you have trouble understanding the English words in the title, it's about these two people, Zach and Miri, who through the course of the story decide to make a pornographic film along with some colorful friends they meet on the way. It's got swear words and poo jokes, really graphic descriptions of hardcore sexiness, and it even has a pair of humongous breasts, neither of which belong to the title characters. Did I like it? Do I normally have a shower at two in the afternoon? Sadly, the answer to both questions is no. The movie stars Seth Rogen as seemingly himself, playing a guy named Zach, who's a regular schlub of a dude, whose roommate happens to be his lifelong BFF, the dorky Miri, played by the decidedly undorky Elizabeth Banks. These two losers find themselves on the eve of their 10-year high school reunion, single, broke, and desperate. Their water and their power get shut off, and they can't make rent. And since A plus B equals C, they decide to make a porno. Oh boy, this ought to be good. But it's not good. It's painful to watch. It's full of the same old tired Kevin Smith gags you've seen in every one of his other movies. And it feels like it's been stitched together by a grade 10 communications class. More than anyone else in Hollywood, except for maybe Michael Moore, Kevin Smith seems to be the number one polarizing filmmaker out there. People either seem to love or despise his work. Yet, there's something that everyone agrees upon, and that's that even though he's a passable writer, he's no director. Myself, I haven't even been a fan of his writing since Clerks. Zack and Miri didn't do much to change my mind. The first bit of the story actually seems to move along quite nicely. Although there's very little in the way of character development for poor Miri. Zach, a dorky looking coffee shop guy who plays hockey, seems to be fleshed out enough. But where does Miri work? Why can't she make the rent? Why is she such a loser 10 years out of high school? No clues are given. And to make these matters worse, they cast Elizabeth Banks in the title role. You can't expect me to believe that she and Seth Rogen even share the same universe, let alone the same apartment. And then comes the actual making a porno part of the movie, where Zack and Miri are forced to face the reality of their decision head on. They're actually going to have to do it, together, on camera. Somehow, this awkward experience awakens something in both the characters, though predictably more visibly in Miri seems they start to feel things that they probably felt all along, but just never realized it. But this revelation comes with the worst possible soundtrack you can imagine, and it's cut together so clumsily that any emotion the audience is supposed to feel is practically handed to them like a paper bag at a drive through window. I mean, I'm not asking for art house subtlety here, but when an improbable pair of lifelong friends decides to have sex in front of strangers in order to not be thrown out onto the street, and they fall in love in the process, then as a filmmaker, you've got some work to do. I mean, changing gears like that in a film like this can be tricky. And in the hands of someone more capable, like maybe Judd Apatow, it can be virtually seamless. Kevin Smith, on the other hand, just powers through it in order to get back to his safe zone of anal sex enemas and Dutch rudders. Look it up. Overall, I'd have to give him credit for at least trying to make something that doesn't just go for the cheap laughs, despite the obvious setup. I mean, Kevin Smith's trying to make a film here about loyalty and love, and I guess, you know, I'd have to admire him for it. But it's just too bad that he can't just sit back and be content with being the writer and the producer. You know, a reworked script in the hands of someone more capable might, might have made for an all right movie. But here in the real world, what we were given is something that I'd really have to advise against seeing. Though, there is this one scene at the actual high school reunion featuring Justin Long and Brandon Routh as an over-the-top gay couple that even I found funny. I kept holding up for these characters to return, but sadly they were relegated to just cameo status. But if you're interested, the scene takes place within the first 20 minutes of the film, so you could actually go watch this scene and still walk out in time to get your money back from the theater manager. 
If you stay any longer though, you'll just end up feeling really, really gross like I did.